because I sort of danced around doing projects with superpowers, you know, whether it was Jumper, actually it was a real superpower, things like Born Identity, where it's kind of, Matt Damon sort of has a superpower. Um, and I, I felt like it was sort of a itch I hadn't quite scratched yet. And I, I really wanted to get in there, and, and um, I like putting characters in situations, outrageous situations, and I, I really can't imagine a more outrageous situation than suddenly teleporting. Um, and um, especially, you know, the way we treat it at Impulse, where it's, it's more of a curse. Right. Um, where you uh, see a few episodes, you know, she's, she gets sent back to the one place she doesn't want to be. Um, and then um, when Lauren came on board, you know, I already had, like, high aspirations uh, for what you could do in this world. Um, and, and because it starts with a, a sexual assault and... Maybe because I'm, a, I'm a, a guy, I sort of was like, okay, you know, we're doing that in the pilot, and, and that's, well, you know, right. that's the inciting incident. But, and, and Lauren really sort of opened us up to really how that stays with somebody and, and how it, it should be part of, of the whole season and, and, and connected to the, the teleportation. And, um, and I'm all for sort of the superpower being paid for. You look at Tom Cruise in, in uh, Live, Die, Repeat, you know, it's, he gets to relive the day, but the, the death sucks. It hurts. And so, uh, you know, when, when Lauren sort of, sort of found this way to sort of have pain be connected um, to the superpower, it, it suddenly opened up the show in a way that is so much better and so much more interesting and personal um, than the aspirations I had for it, and I had huge aspirations. Can you talk about it anymore, yeah, no, I mean, I, so uh, I came on after the pilot was shot, and uh, I really, I connected to that moment because I think in any genre story, it's really important to figure out whatever that inciting incident is, is always important. Um, but for me, I saw that as an opportunity to tell a deeper story along with it. I think that's what genre storytelling is about, what's underlying something, and it's what separates it from something that's completely grounded. But I, I think what Doug established in the pilot that was so excellent was that the genre was grounded. Things feel really practical. It feels very real. It's not a superhero show. It doesn't feel like there are magical powers. And to, to keep with that, um, for me, it felt important and worthwhile to follow Henry on her journey of this moment that was traumatizing on a number of levels. It's this, the one moment she teleports, and it, it's to save herself from being raped. Um, from this boy. Had she not done that, um, she probably would have been raped. Uh, and yet, at the same time, she leaves this boy uh, as a paraplegic as a result, and she's confused and doesn't know what's happening because she teleported. Um, and so what we strive to do is make sure that Henry feels that she's not sure if that was a teleportation. And we linked teleportation and assault purposely for that reason. So I think a lot of um, assault survivors who we spoke to feel uh, disconnected from the event mm -hmm. themselves and feel like it was their fault and we tried to uh, use something very similar using teleportation in, in an elevated way with Henry's character. And she's so powerful too, you know, I mean she seems so powerful. She really is, you know, on the inside I guess. And we wrote that for, for Maddie. I mean it was, the character was actually very different in the original draft and, and Maddie came in to audition and blew us away, but we, we totally reconceived the character for her. Uh, and for the strength that she brings. No, uh, she was uh, uh, snowboarding and got <laughs> caught in an avalanche. Very different. <laughs> <laughs> different tone. <laughs> Touch different tone. <laughs> I mean, you know, if you look at my book adaptations, they, they sort of, they deviate pretty dramatically from the source material. I mean, try, you know, you'll find one scene in, in Born Identity, the movie, that was from the book, and the rest of it is, is totally reconceived. Um, but there's the spirit of it. Um, and in this case, uh, there was something about uh, a character that just didn't want to be there. 
and and from from uh, I, I have not been assaulted, but from what I've been told, people have been assaulted. That there is a sense of you want to be anywhere but there, and you sometimes leave your body. And thought that's you know that would be the, it. Just felt naturally connected to the, the, the superpower of teleportation. It's like it's what you wish you could do in that moment. You you are doing it in your mind, and what if your body just followed your mind? Uh, did you uh, develop the, the pilot for a <laughs> YouTube Red, or did it come in a process that uh, an agent got, got through that deal, or were you developing it for maybe for a different network? Or no, it was, was it? I was having just a general meeting at YouTube Red, and mentioned I was interested in, in going back to the world of Jumper, and they said, sold. <laughs> <laughs> It's I a mean, very honestly, we didn't even. Process. <laughs> it doesn't always happen that way. That that was the extent of the pitch. Like they they literally bought it outright and committed. You know, I mean, Gene can speak more to it, but I, I think, believe they committed right then and there to like go make a pilot. They essentially did. Doug actually was having that meeting in New York. We were in Los Angeles. He called up and he's like, "I think it just sold to YouTube." And we said, "Doug, we were we're in the formative stages. We're actually finding a writer to develop a pitch to take it out to a lot of people. And Doug called up and said, I sold it. <laughs> sold it. what? <laughs> so, uh, and then they, they were really, really amazing yeah. place to, to, uh, to do the show. Yeah, creatively, they've given us so much freedom. And I've worked for a number of networks and, and nothing bad to them, but it was really freeing creatively. Yeah. For us to be able to say, look, we're gonna do something really dark tonally, and we wanna tell an assault story, and we wanna tell a story about a young woman in a small town struggling with a number of other things, and um, we wanna have a character with autism in the show, and we wanna explore some And the other male lead is gonna be a paraplegic. Right, yeah. and things that, I can't even tell you so many executives would say, no, 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 this is, these are things people don't want to see, you don't want to watch, or this would make people uncomfortable. And instead, they were such great creative partners and embraced everything, um, and so supportive, which is exactly what you want. Um, so, and I think it is partly because they're such a young network, because they're not traditional, that they're much more open to different types of stories. And also, the other thing is, yeah, yeah. think about the YouTube audience. I mean, and, and that audience is used to seeing things that are real, you know, that are not this sort of glossy network portrayal of what life is like, but they're used to seeing actual real life, people posting things on YouTube, and so I think it was consistent with their brand um, to say, we're going we're gonna to do this in a very honest way, in a way that speaks honestly um, to your audience. I mean, the thing is that somehow the show is still unbelievably fun. Like, it, 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 I mean, I hate to, I, I, I'm just saying it, it, it is, uh, it, it is, and, and I think part of, of why, uh, why I'm, I'm so attracted to, to genre is that you can tackle these very heavy issues, um, but you can do it in a way that's sort of more accessible and more fun, you know, where maybe I'm, I might not be comfortable just dealing with the issues if I had to, if I didn't have this mechanism of this sort of glossy veneer of a superpower sort of laid over it. The same way that, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Smith deals with issues of marital trust and fidelity that I don't think I would be comfortable doing a film about a couple dealing with those issues okay. until you add the automatic weapons. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And now I can really dig into those issues and, and, and like, I feel even, bad bringing that up because what Lauren's done is so much deeper than, well, than what I explored in Mr. and Mrs. Smith in terms of tackling real issues. Well, and it's to our actors' credit, truly, because both Maddie and Daniel both did independent research for their characters. The writers all did research as well because we take it very seriously. We want to make sure we're being as accurate and respectful as possible for any portrayals that we're doing. But, you know, it's, it's a lot to ask your actors to do some of these things, and it can be really uncomfortable. I mean, the situations we had to put Maddie in when we reshot the sexual assault 
I was sitting down with Maddie and being like, I'm going to ask you to do something again that's uncomfortable. Um, and but you know, Maddie spoke to a bunch of survivors, and and you can speak to that more than I can about your experience with that. And I think portrays it as I mean for something so difficult, so accurately, and so well for the ask that is for us to, to do for her. Um, yeah, it's really painful. Um, when I think about Henry, I get a little bit depressed. I cried yesterday thinking about talking about it today because I'm emotional. <laughs> um, <laughs> you were like, how did it feel? And I was like, oh. Um, it's difficult, but it's worthwhile. It's, you know, I think film and TV are a way of having a conversation. And like Doug said, in the world of sci-fi, it makes these very serious real life matters a little bit more um, accessible and and swallowable, swallowable yeah. in a way. I mean, it's painful to watch, but it's easier to listen and to learn when it's in this world that, you know, is detached from your real life. Um, so it's hard, but it's, when you shoot a scene like that that's so painful and taxing and exhausting, you know at the end of the day that you did something that could um, impact somebody's life in a positive way. Yeah. 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 There's there's a, a totally yeah, and there's there's a danger that a character like this can become a, a cliche or a stereotype or um, become only comic relief mm -hmm. at, at times. Um, but what I love about the writing is that Henry is everything that he's excited about. He can be a little bit narrow, focused on on his own kind of fantasy world and, and the things that he's uh, uh, playing in, in video games and here she is and she's, she's providing that. So instead of the character becoming inward and hard to uh, relate to, he's actually found something that, that pulls him out of himself and so we see him at his most kind of open and those are characters that can be very close off. Mm -hmm. Well yeah and one thing when we were talking to different um, autism experts as we did, they said, you know, when we asked about portrayals across the board of what should we not portray, just as much as what should we, um, and they said so often you see characters with autism portrayed as total loners who don't know how to be friends with anyone, but in fact they can be the most loyal friend out there. And so, yeah, so we leaned into that and we wanted to make sure that we have Henry and Towns have this great connection, largely because Henry's so blunt <laughs> and Towns responds very well to that. Yeah. Um, and that's sort of the jumping off point along with you know the fantasy comic book angle that Towns is obsessed with that Henry happens to sort of slot into for them to kind of start a connection. The original jumper had jumped a hundred. I know we have a little bit of that in this. I, I don't think they're, I would yeah. say they're jumper hunters. Yeah, we, yeah. we were not, it's, it's a very different world. It was not, it's a world where you're not sure there are any other jumpers, really. I mean, it, it's not—it's not a world where like they're all over the place and there's all systems in place. You know, it's like a little bit like the the X, uh, the, like X Men. It's even more grounded than that. I mean, I think every, with every step in the show, you try to ask the question: What would really happen? So that once teleportation exists in the world, what would happen? It would be a corporation that would be interested in. The, harnessing it somehow. There was so, you know, what would happen? People who are doing really smuggling happens, would be interested in using it. Yeah. So I think in, in the world of Jumper, there's a thousand years of conflict between the people and the universe. You know, this is much more comes from a place of like, okay, assuming this exists, what would happen? Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.